The simplest way to describe a set would be a container. And as a container, a set contains objects. In discrete math, these objects are usually referred to as elements. An example of a set can be just about anything, such as a box of crayons. In this case, each crayon is an element of the set box of crayons. Another example would be a football team. In that case, football team is a set and each player is an element. Now since this is supposed to be math, let's try a set that contains numbers. For example, let's make a set called S and let it contain some numbers. The notation that we use for a set is the name of the set followed by an equal sign and then the actual elements of the set within a pair of braces. Now let's look at the elements. In this case, we can see that 3 is an element of the set, but 6 is not an element of the set, and we notate this by adding a little slash through the element symbol. So what if we want this set to go on past 5? What if the set goes on to infinity? Obviously, writing out each element would be impossible, so we use an ellipse to symbolize the fact that this pattern continues indefinitely. So here we can say that the set S contains all positive integers, starting with the number 1 and going on forever. Notice that we can go in the other direction too. In this case, we have the set of negative integers. So what if I wanted to define a set as all of the integers that are between 2 and 7? Now I could simply do it like this. But what if the set is bigger? What if the set is, say, all of the integers between 2 and 100? Now there's different ways to do this, but one way is to use a variable, like x or y, as a placeholder, and then define the scope of x. So this is basically the same as the first one, but we've defined x using greater than and less than operators. Now the line in between the x's is usually translated as such that. So if I'm reading from left to right, I would say s equals x such that x is greater than 2 and x is less than 7. The advantage of this kind of notation is that we scale very easily. So I can quickly replace the 7 with 100, or whatever I need, and I have a much different set. So this was just a very basic introduction to set theory. In the next video, we'll look at some more things that you can do with set builder notation, and we'll also look at some of the common sets that you'll need to know.